Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Super excited to be here with you today. This is an episode I've wanted to do for a long time. Today we're gonna to take a look at how to build some of the basic navigation on the Spotify Playlist app. So here you've got your music and your podcasts. We've got different types of animations with tile bars at the top. We've got a menu bar with a nice sliding animated green view uh, indicator here. Note how that indicator changes width as we swipe. And it's just a really cool little app that shows you some of the mechanics that go on into building a app like Spotify. So if you're interested, come on in and let's see how we can build this app. So the way we're gonna break this down is we're gonna break it into two parts. In part one, we're gonna take a look at how to build this title view controller. This little bit at the top that allows us to select podcasts, music, animate back and forth, and kind of give us a nice fade between those labels and really just have our high level navigation start at that level. Then in part two, we're gonna get into these things called menu bars. Those are the three, men this is the three item menu bar here. I note how when we click these, we not only uh, select and tab over to different views, we can also swipe. And we also have a collection here that enables us to swipe up and down. But to start off with, we're gonna start with these titles. We're then gonna leave those and build the menu bar. And then the final section, we're gonna bring them all together and make them one app. Of course, this is gonna take us several videos because there's quite a bit of work in doing this. But let's start by looking at how we'd go about architecting this title bar controller. So for right here, if we're just looking at the music and podcast, this navigation up here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a navigation controller. These are gonna be bar button items. And then we're gonna swap child view controllers in here, depending upon which button we type. So the architecture looks something like this. This is gonna be a high level navigation controller at the top. We're gonna to add a couple of bar button items with some styling here. And then we're gonna have a container object, which is gonna contain two view controllers, our music and our podcast. And we're gonna animate and flip between those. We're gonna start high, very high level, just use some very basic view controllers. We'll get this going and move on to the menu bar and more advanced stuff after that. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so let's fire up Xcode. I'm gonna go Shift Command N to create a brand new project here. This is gonna be a single view application. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm gonna call it Spotify. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. Feel free to save it wherever you like. And if we hit Command R, let's just verify we get our simulator up. And indeed we do. Okay, good to go. The first thing I'm gonna show you how to do here is how to create a brand new project without using storyboards. We don't need storyboards. I don't really wanna use them here because what we're doing is quite advanced. We're gonna do everything programmatically. So first, let's get rid of the storyboard. Let's start by going over to our project, finding main storyboard and just deleting it. I'm just gonna go command delete. That will enable me to delete that, get that out of there. And then the next thing I need to do is, I don't need this thing called a scene delegate. That's not gonna help us out here either. So let's get rid of that. Then go into the P list and there's two entries in here we wanna get rid of. One, we wanna get rid of the main storyboard file base name. It's a entry here in your P list. If you go to the little negative sign here, you can just delete that entry and get rid of that. And then we also don't need this entry called application scene manifest. Go ahead and find that hit the minus sign and bam, we've gotten rid of that. Now, the other thing I like to do here is we don't actually need to see all these files all the time. So quite often I'll come in here and I'll create a new group uh, without folder and I'll just call it files. And I'm just gonna stick the files that I don't need in there, the assets, the launch screen storyboard. We do need to keep that storyboard. That's something Apple insists on and the info P list. And I'm just gonna drop them in there just to get them out of the way, thank you. And now the only thing we need to do is we need to modify our app delegate so that it can launch our view controller natively at startup. So when you create a brand new, brand new project, you get a whole bunch of stuff like this for your app delegate. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all of that. And there's a really cool feature in Xcode where if you're reusing common code over and over again, you can add it as something called a snippet. 
which is what I've already done up here. I'm going to come up here to this library and I have some snippets already created. One of them is going to give me code which will show me how to create a, uh, a view controller in a navigation view controller without requiring a storyboard. And let's just take a look at this code and see what this is doing. So here we've basically got a window which all applications need and then we can set a background on it if we like um, just to prove that we've, we're touching it. And then basically we're going to create a navigation controller and in there is going to be our view controller. And that's how we can take over the storyboard, add our own view controller into the app at launch time. And if we hit command R to run that, we should now have a storyboard embedded in a navigation controller, which you can see by that slight different color at the top. And there we go, no storyboard, everything can now be done programmatically. To build this title bar controller, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna create a brand new uh, view controller, actually called title bar controller. And we've already got our app embedded in a UI navigation controller, so that's good. We're then going to take that title bar controller, embed it in our navigation controller, and then create our view to look something like this. We're going to have two bar button items at the top, music and podcast. Those are going to sit there as children of this navigation controller. And then we're going to create a brand new container. This is going to be a view controller, which is going to hold other view controllers. So this container, which we need because we want it to sit right under the nav bar here, is going to contain two child view controllers, one for music, one for podcast, and then we're just going to swipe between them. Uh, sorry, we're not going to swipe between them. We're going to tap these buttons at the top and it's going to navigate between two different view controllers. So notice how this whole thing is sliding back and forth. That's what we're going to figure out how to animate and make happen. We're going to do with plain colored views just to get things going at first, but that's really what we're shooting for here. And that's the high level architecture. Okay, so if we go back to the app now, let's start by just renaming this view controller, our title bar controller. This is the new controller we're gonna create. I'm just gonna rename it here. And if I go command zero and I bring it over here, I can rename the file here. We're gonna call it uh, title bar controller. I'm gonna rename it here. And just for sanity shake, I'm gonna go command R and just verify it runs and make sure everything's good, which it is. Okay, great. Okay, so to start off with, let's just add or create the two child view controllers we do eventually want to display when someone selects music or podcast. So we can just do that by defining two new music, two new view controllers. I'm going to call one music, music view controller, and that is just going to extend and be a regular UI view controller. And in there, we're going to just do our classic override of view did load. I'm going to stop this running so I get autocomplete a little bit better. View did load in there. Whoops. In there, let's always call super. And we're not going to actually build this out yet. All I want to do is set the background color so that I'll know when I've got this uh, view controller presented. So I'm just going to change its view background color to be system.blue. So system blue is a standard blue that comes with iOS and it's just going to change the entire background blue when we are displaying that. And then I'm just going to copy and paste and do the same thing for our podcast view controller. So I'm going to call this one podcast. It also is just going to extend to be a plain old uh, view controller. But this one, let's change the color and let's make it system yellow. Okay, so those are the two view controllers we're eventually going to present. Let's now focus on how to get these bar button items up here. So the way bar button items work is these are controls you can create, which sit in a navigation bar. And in our case, we're going to create two of them, one for music, one for podcasts, and we're going to hook up some target actions to them. So when you tap them, uh, they do things, but these are going to be bar button items sitting in a navigation controller. So the way to do that is we create these things. We just basically create our buttons. I'm going to come in here to my title bar controller and right at the very top, I'm just going to define a music bar button item and a podcast bar button item. Uh, these don't exist yet. Uh, the exclamation mark here says, don't worry, they will exist. We're going to create them. 
And to create them and have them available uh, as soon as the object's created, I need to override the view controller's initializer. So let's just do that. Let's go override init. We're going to override this standard nib name bundle uh, initializer, and we always want to call super, well, almost always, and we'll call it on this same uh, constructor here. So here the nib name doesn't really matter. I'm going to pass a nil for bundle ID, that optional string I'm going to pass a nil. And then down here, this is where we really want to create our button, our bar button items and have them be ready to go. And of course, we'll just uh, accept this required initializer, as if, if, which we would use if we had storyboards, but we're not, so we don't need to worry about that. And what I'm going to copy and paste and show you now is a convenience method I have for creating each of our bar button items. So let me just show you what that looks like and we'll walk through the code here. So this is a function that we're going to use to create a bar button item. Let me just show you what they're going to look like. They are basically going to enable us to create our bar button items like this. So basically, we're going to create a button item with music, one with podcasts. We're going to give it a method or an action selector. This is what happens when we actually tap those. But let's just go over this function, uh, make bar button item, and see what's actually going on in here. So because this is a fairly high functional bar button item, we're actually going to create our own custom view, which is going to be a UI button. And it's going to be, and that's what we're going to stick up here at the very top. So we're going to create a UI bar button item, uh, turn off auto layout. We're going to add the target action or what happens when you click that. That's going to be the selector variable we pass in here. For music, it's going to be a function called music tap. For podcast, it's going to be one called podcast tapped. And when we get in here, note the way this is styled. These are non-standard bar button items. They've got some really like cool looking, it's a different size. Um, we want to control basically the look and feel of these. And one way to do that in iOS is to use these things called attributed strings. So here, we're basically going to control the look and feel of each of those items by giving them some properties. For instance, here, I'm going to give our bar button items two attributes. One is I'm going to say I'd like to use what's called a preferred font of large title, and I'm going to make it bold. And secondly, I also want to give that attributed item a color, a foreground color of color label. Now, what's so interesting about these is if you look at the color label, you might be thinking, well, what color is that exactly? Is it white? Is it black? It seems strange to me. This is Apple's new way of enabling and using dark mode. In dark mode, you don't always go white, yellow, green, red. In most cases, if you want to have dark mode handle the color for you, you'll use a color like label. So that's what we're doing here. So we're going to create these attributed strings, which basically have properties. And we're then going to set those on the button, which is going to control our text. That's how we're going to get this music and podcast to be of size large title with color label. Then we're going to give it a little bit of edge insets just to give it some spacing. This is going to give it a little bit of spacing to the right of 16. And then finally, we can create our bar button item passing in our button here, which we created. And this is called a custom view in bar button item terms. This could be any view we wanted. In this case, we're just going to use a simple button. And then we're going to return that there. So that's what's going on with this function here. Now, the reason why it's complaining here with traits, this is a function that I needed to add in order to enable our attributed strings to support bolding. Bolding doesn't come by default with attributed items, so I'm going to handle that with a little extension down here on UI font called with traits. And basically what this does is this uses these things called symbolic traits to take the font that we've got, enable one to add traits to it, like italics and bold and different things. And the only one I'm going to support right now, because this is the only one we need, is bolding which is why we can go with traits here, passing in this trait bold, and that's what will take the title we pass in here and make it bold. That's just what's going on there. Now we like our buttons to do something when we tap them, this music tap, music podcast. So let's go ahead and add those actions down here. So for target action, these need to be Objective C uh, functions. So we're gonna go ahead and give it that attribute there, Objective C. And this is just going to be a function called, in our case, music tapped. Just a plain old function like this. It's not going to do anything yet. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing for podcast. So if we go like this and we call it podcast tapped. Hopefully now everything should compile and we've created two buttons. We haven't added them yet, but that's basically how we're gonna set up those two bar button items and give them some basic styling. Now to get those bar button items to appear, let's go back up to view to load and create a little uh, function called setup nav bar. And that's where we'll do our navigation bar work. So here we'll go, uh, let's see, let's just create a function called setup nav bar. And in there, let's go ahead and add those controls or those buttons, sorry, to our nav bar which we can do like this. Navigation item, left bar button items is gonna be equal to an array of our two buttons that we just created. So what we're basically saying here is I'd like these two buttons to sit as left bar button items here over on the left-hand side. That's how we can do that. And if we run this now, let's see if anything comes up. Hey, okay, that's a start, there we go. We've got our music and our podcast coming up as buttons at the very top. Good stuff. Now what's interesting if we compare where we want to go to where we are now, uh, everything we've done here is looking pretty white with uh, black labels. And remember, the color we chose for these labels here wasn't black, it was label. And that's good because uh, we're gonna try to build this app as close as we can to the Spotify one, but we're also gonna use some more new modern affordances in iOS. One of them is called dark mode, which is really cool. And what dark mode does, if you don't already know, is it enables you to flip your phone into a darker setting and have Apple and iOS handle all of the changes and affordances for you. So on our simulator, if we go shift command H, to pop out of our app and we go over to the general settings here. In settings, if we go to developer at the very bottom, we'll see a dark appearance selector here. If we flip that, notice how everything just magically changed. The phone and the simulator flipped over to a dark mode and it automatically handled all the color differences for us. So if I go shift command H, to get back to my app, which should be running over here, Spotify, and I run it. Now look what happened. It magically changed our header at the top to a darker color. It changed our label color from black to white. This is still white because we still set this in our app delegate, but it automatically flipped it over. And that's a really cool thing. When you're building modern applications, you wanna have this built-in functionality into your app by default. So we're gonna continue with this and keep uh, working this way in dark mode as we develop the app. Okay, to keep it looking even more dark, I'm gonna go Command-0 to bring back our navigation slider on the left. Let's go back into App Delegate and let's get rid of this uh, white here. We don't need you. And let's just run the app again. And there, everything is looking nice and dark. Okay, good stuff. Next, let's see how we can actually add in and react to those button presses. And when we hit podcast and music, have the actual view controllers here slide up. Now to understand how that works, you need to understand something called child view controllers and how they work. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this container object we haven't created yet, add these child view controllers to it. And there's just a couple of methods we need to call in order to add and remove and make sure the child view controllers are all hooked up in the correct hierarchy that view controllers need to make sure view to load and everything else is connected. There's basically just three calls we need to make. We're gonna add them as an extension. Let's see what that looks like now. So coming back to our app, let's go back to our title bar view controller here. I'm gonna go uh, command zero to make a little bit more space. And what I'd like to do next is create a brand new view controller called container, which is gonna sit right under our navigation bar here. And that's the thing that's gonna contain our child view controller. I could have done it in the parent view controller here, title bar view controller, but then it would have been a full screen takeover, which I don't want. So that's why I'm going to create a container view controller and add the child uh, children view controllers to there. So let's come over to our menu here. I'm going to go command N and I'm going to create a brand new Swift object called container. 
And this is going to be a, I'm just going to import UI kit. This is going to be a view controller, just like this. And let's do all of our super uh, override view to load. There we go. Call super on that. And that's all this guy's going to do. He's just going to be a containing view controller. This is what's going to contain our child view controllers. It's going to sit right under the menu bar. And if we go back into our title bar controller, we can just create this guy. Let's go here and I'm going to make this a let because he doesn't need to change. I'm just going to call him container. He is going to be equal to container. And what we need to do now is pin him to the top left, bottom right of our layout here. We're going to do that using auto layout. So because it's the view of the container view that we actually want to pin here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get that. And that's an optional. So I need to pull that out of my container view like this. So I'm going to go to my container view controller. I'm going to ask for its view, which is optional. And it's going to be there, but that's just the way the guard clause works is I need to unwrap it first. If we don't, I'm just going to return. But at this point, I've got my container view, which I can now pin around uh, our controller there. So basically with the container view, like we always want to do with uh, auto layout, always remember to go translate auto resizing mask into constraints to go to false, because if you forget that, uh, auto layout will not work. And then we just do our standard auto layout stuff. So I'm gonna go add sub view, this container view we just grabbed. Now let's add it to our sub view, which means now we can lay it out. And let's go ahead and do that. And I've got another convenient little snippet here this one is called Activate Constraints Array. This is just a convenient place to embed all of your auto layout constraints so that every time you create a constraint, you don't need to go is active equal true. And here I'm just gonna go top, leading, bottom, right, and do the layout here. So we're gonna grab our container view and we're gonna go top, anchor. I would like you to be sitting below the um, Constraints. There's a whole bunch of options here when you're laying out constraints. I want my top anchor constraint here to be equal to the system spacing below that menu bar at the top with a multiplier of about two. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one and go view dot safe area layout guide. Safe area layout guide top anchor with a multiplier of two and then a comma, because this is an array. So that's gonna pin it right to the top with about 16 points. Uh, each multiply here, a multiplier of one is eight points, so two is 16. And that's gonna put it about 16, just below the safe area under the nav bar of our view controller there. So that's the top. Now let's do the leading. The leading one, I'm fine going right up to the edge. So I'm gonna go leading, uh, anchor that constraint, I can just say, I want you just to be equal to the views leading anchor, just like that. Same for trailing. I'm gonna go view controller trailing anchor. That constraint is gonna go right up to the trailing one. View dot trailing. And I don't need that constant stuff at the end, so we'll just go like that. And then finally, the bottom, I'm going to go container view bottom, bottom anchor. And I'm going to have you equal to the view safe area layout guide dot bottom anchor there. And that should take that view, that container, and flush it right out all around there. Set up views. Let's just run that now. Nothing actually shows up. It's because everything's black. Let's change our container's color here just to see if we can get it to uh, show up a little bit better and see what it looks like. Container view dot background color. Let's just make you system, system pink. Let's run it again. Okay, and voila, there we go. That's our container pinned out top, leading, trailing, bottom. That is now ready to handle and receive some child view controllers.
Now there's three things we need to do whenever we add or remove child view controllers to another view controller. And those three things are this. First, we need to add the child view controller to the view controller that's containing it ourselves. Then we need to add the subview of the child view controller as a subview of the parent. And then finally, we need to need we need to also call child did move to the parent itself. All these things are necessary to make sure the child view controller is connected and made a part of the parent's view hierarchy. So when responder chain events, uh, you tap and you want your child view controllers to send their messages all the way up to the parent. This is what we need to do. And then it's the same with remove, except it's the opposite. We'll remove, uh, remove from super view and remove from parent. But basically by adding this as an extension onto UI view controller with one line now, we can go add child view controller and it will do all these things for us. So that's what this extension is going to do. Okay, so how do we add these kids to the child view controller? Let's go back up to the top of title bar here. Let's go ahead and create an array of view controllers like this, an array of UI view controllers. And let's just make those be equal to our music view controller and our podcast view controller. So there we go. These are our child view controllers. We've got them set up and it is in an array like this. Oops, I don't need the S there. And I do need to spell view controller right. I'm going to go command zero to make a little bit of space. And now we actually want to do something when people select either music or podcast at the top. So let's go back down to our action methods down here, which are currently empty. And this is where we actually want to, when someone taps music, we want to show the music uh, view controller. And when someone taps podcast, we want to show the uh, podcast view controller. And the way we can do that is like this. If someone taps music, what we want to do is we want to take the very first element of that child view controller and present it. But if we're already showing it, uh, we don't need to present it again. And remember, it's the container that's going to basically be holding these child view controllers. So we can ask our container out of the children if the first child you've got is equal to our music uh, view controller. In other words, if we're already showing music, uh, there's nothing to do here. Just return and get out of here. So we don't need to do anything if we're already presenting music. But if we're not, and we actually want to show music, well, here's how we do it. We grab our container and we go add view controller music. So the very first element of our view controller at the top here, that's going to be our music view controller here with an index of zero and pod case, I should say podcast. <laughs> I didn't see that typo. Uh, the podcast view controller here is going to be item one. So if we come back down here and to remove it, a child view controller removes itself. So we just go to the child view controller itself, which in our case is going to have an index of one, and we ask it to remove itself. There, that's music tapped. And it's just going to be the exact same thing, but flipped for podcast tapped. Here we want to basically check and see, are we already showing a podcast? If we are, uh, there's nothing for us to do. We can just keep showing it. But if we're not, then we're going to want to add the podcast and remove the music. And I forgot some brackets here. But hopefully that'll do it. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so here's our nice pink view. This is the background of our container. If we tap music now, great. Music comes up, which is blue. If we tap podcast, great. Podcast comes up, which is yellow. So that's great. We're now, we've now added child view controllers. They can select music or podcasts here, and we can make that happen. Super. If we look at the actual Spotify app, though, notice how when we select podcasts and music, those child view controllers just don't appear. They animate in. That's a pretty cool effect. How are we going to make these yellow and blue view controllers animate in from the side to give this nice back and forth functionality that the Spotify app has? 
Well, before we can do that, we need to understand a little bit about how frames and animations work. So this is our challenge. We want that music and podcast, those child view controllers to animate in and out, left and right, depending upon what button was selected. And the way we can do that is to understand that every UI view control has something called a frame. So frame is basically what the user sees uh, when you present it. And you can control this. You can set coordinates. You can change the frame of a view. So you can take the view and shift it down, shift it left, shift it right. And in our case, our view, which is going to have an origin of 0, 0 in the upper left-hand corner, has a width of 414 and a height of 896. Now, those are hard-coded numbers uh, for my particular simulator at this point, which is the 11. But basically, by understanding that we have a frame there, we can do something with it. For example, we can take a frame that's shown on the screen, and if we change its origin by moving X over to 414, we can effectively take that view, which is on screen, and just shift it off screen by changing its origin along the X axis 414, and the user will no longer see it. So we can use that property to basically change a view's frame in an animation while we're adding and removing those child view controllers. So we can basically have both child view controllers in the view presented at once, set their frames up appropriately. So if we want to show music, we're gonna have music presented at minus 414 over the side here. And when they tap music, we're going to animate or slide it in so it's in the frame user currently sees. Conversely, we'll then take podcast, which was displayed in the frame from zero to 414, and we will slide it off and move its origin to 414. So its frame is effectively off the screen and animated onto the right-hand side. That's what we're gonna do. That's how we're gonna animate and handle the sliding and sliding out. And that's basically how we can take child view controllers and animate them in. So jumping back to Xcode, we can do all of that with a function that looks just like this. Now I'm gonna spare you the math, we're still gonna go through it, but basically what we're doing here is we've got a function called animate transition, where we're gonna have a from VC to a to VC, and then we're gonna have a completion block, which is gonna execute when the animation successfully ends. And this is all basically math, basically. Uh, first, we just need to figure out, uh, we need to grab the view from our from view controller. We need to grab the view from our to view controller. We need to know the index of whether we are zero or one, whether we're animating from or to. And then this is the math basically where we get the frame from our from VC and we just calculate these things called frame end and frame start. That's basically the origins for where these things are gonna move left and right. And then depending upon what our index is, whether we're currently in music or currently in podcast, we're either gonna slide the frame origin X like this, or we're gonna slide the frame origin X like this. We're either gonna add or remove the width depending upon whether we're the music or the podcast child view controller currently, currently being displayed. And once we've done that, then we just lay that out in a nice little UI animation with the duration of half a second. We're basically we're gonna take our from view frame, which has already been set up, and say, you know what, I'd actually like you to end up over here. And for the to view frame, which was maybe off to the side, I'd like you to actually now appear in the main frame view. And then we fire off this completion block saying, hey, everything works successfully. And whoever's calling this will now know that. So there's just one little function I need to bring in here, something called get index. That's just another little function that enables me to, given any view controller in a for loop, basically figure out which view controller am I, am, am I at? Am I at zero or am I at one? And this basically just returns an int of either zero or one. So with that method now, if we come back up to music tap and podcast tap, the removal code for adding and removing our view controllers now just gets called like this. So instead of bluntly calling remove and just popping it in there, we're now gonna do it in this little animation here called animate translation passing in, uh, in this case, where we're moving from. So we are on podcast and we wanna to move to music with an index of zero. And then when that's done, then we can remove 
uh, the podcast when our animation is complete. And we're going to do the same thing for podcast. I'm going to come down here and we don't need to explicitly call remove just like this. We're going to do it in the animate method down here. We need the self because we are in a completion block here. And, and if we run this now by going command R, now when we type music or podcast, lo and behold, those things animate and slide in nicely. Great. That's, that's more or less what we want. If we compare that to the other simulator we had here, where are you? So just like we tap here and we've got actual entire view controller sliding back and forth, we've now set up the scaffolding for that here. We can do the same thing just by typing back and forth and making that slide. Good stuff. Okay, just a little bit of cleanup and some affordances before we uh, wrap up this video. Let's make us when the app starts, music is displayed by default. So I'm gonna just add a music tab here. Now when we run the app, we will no longer see the pink container view in the background. We should now see the music tapped and that's our default view that we're gonna start with. Just like this. Next, if you notice right under the bar here, it's very faint. I can barely see, you may not be able to see, but there's a slight line. This is actually a shadow that appears under a navigation bar. And you'll notice over here, there is none. It's, it's completely flesh. So to get rid of that bar, we can just drop in some code when we go to set up navigation bar. This is what is going to basically create a dummy image, put it as the shadow image on that nav bar, and basically translucence false. If we run that now, we should no longer see a little bar at the bottom there. And indeed that little bar there is gone, great. Another thing you'll notice is as we top back and forth between music and podcasts here, notice how the labels themselves fade. The colors change, which gives you a nice indication of whether or not you're on music or you're on podcasts. Well, we can do the same thing by basically doing a very simple animation and changing the alpha. So if we go down to our music tapped function down here, and we add this code here, what we're basically saying is, create an animation on the view with the duration of 0.5 seconds. And if it's the music bar that we've selected, make its alpha uh, completely white, which is gonna give us an alpha of one. Likewise, uh, if our podcast item is not selected, make its alpha 0.5. And we do the exact same thing, but opposite for the podcast tapped. So down here, we can just come down here and add that same logic, but reversed. Um, here the alpha is 0.3, actually I think it should be 0.5 and 1. And if we run that now, when we click these buttons, they should now indeed change and animate in. Super. Now one other last thing just before we clean up here is you'll notice this background color, this black is a slightly different black. It's not as dark as this one here. And if we were doing full on uh, dark mode, I would want to basically handle it in our app delegate I would want to add a background color here of something like system background. Now this is really nice because this is the system background that Apple recommends you use when using dark mode. And if I ran this right now, that would still give us basically this back background. And if we ever flipped out a dark mode and went back to a lighter background, it would also use the same color system background, but it would change it to white. So that's typically what I would want to do by default on an application like this. But in order to get it looking just like the Spotify, I need to create a specific Spotify black, which I can do. I'm just gonna come back into my app here. I'm gonna create a new file called factories because this is just a place where I'm gonna put some factory methods and some convenience routines in order to keep all this one place. I'm gonna import UI kit. And in there, I'm just going to define basically two colors, a Spotify black and a Spotify green, which we're gonna use later. But it's the Spotify black I need right now. And if I go back to app delegate and I change system background to Spotify black, and it's not compiling because it hasn't compiled yet. But if I define it like that and run it, let's see if we do get that nice Spotify black background. And I do just under where the view container is, but this up here is still black. To get the navigation bar to be black, I need to do a slight tint 
or a little bit of work on the navigation bar's appearance itself. In the app delegate, if I grab the navigation bar and I grab its appearance and I set the translucence to false and I set its bar tint color to be Spotify black, and this will change the navigation bar for all the app. If I run that now, I do indeed get the nice Spotify black color that we're looking for. And with that, we now have the title portion of our app working, this title bar. The sizes are slightly different here because I'm using a slightly different simulator. I've got the iPhone Pro Max here versus just the Pro, just so I can have them both here. But basically, this is what we wanted to do just for part one, get this title bar going, set us up really nicely for doing the rest of the work in our containers here. And that's where we're going to go in the next episode of this series. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop it there. The video is getting a bit long, but in part one, just to recap what we did, we created a navigation controller with some bar button items, some custom view bar button items at the top. We learned how to add child view controllers to a container and how to make, animate them in and out by adjusting its frames. By taking a frame, we can slide it left, right, by changing its origin. And this sets us up really nicely for some other functionality coming up Next, we're going to move on to the menu bar and we're going to see how to create a view controller which gives us this kind of nice functionality here along with items that enable us to scroll down here. All right, thanks for coming everyone. Hope you enjoy that. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.